Hello and welcome to uh, Project Plane Tree, uh, the restoration of a vintage 1974 Willard Vega Voyager. Uh, yeah, that's a mouthful. Uh, what that is, that's a boat that was manufactured by Willard Boat Works from about uh, 19, early part of the 70s and to the early part of the 80s. And uh, they made military boats and they briefly made these and they went back to making military boats again. Uh, anyway, they uh, this, they made five different uh, styles of the same hull design. This was the Voyager. Uh, they had a searcher, which was a true motor sailor. Uh, there were some things we didn't like about that one, so we, we went with this one here. And we're going to look at a different type of propulsion for it, whether it be hybrid or electric or it be kite propulsion. And yeah, kite propulsion, that's a thing. A uh, company in Germany is helping us look at that. Uh, but, uh, and I know there's a lot of naysayers on electric, and I get it. It's not like a car. A car uh, takes a lot of energy to get it rolling, then once it gets rolling, it takes very little. A boat is actually just the opposite. It, it, it takes less to get it going, and then once you get it going, it takes a lot because you're, you're having to displace uh, this, all this water. That This is a full displacement boat. It does not go up on a plane. Um, so... Yeah, we have a lot of things moving forward, and we're going to do. Uh, we it took a lot to get the boat here. Uh, we'll we'll talk a little bit about that. My wife Susanna and I we chose to move it here to Packlet, South Carolina, to friends of our shop, uh, Paul and Sarah. Uh, we're using their shop. My shop is down the road, but it wasn't ready to receive the boat yet, and uh, so we we made the decision to move it from Florida. Uh, we had to take the Commandment Bridge off. That's over here. Uh, because it was too tall to get down the roads and once we got it here we got it set up and we built this nice shelter so we can so we can work on it uh, when, during inclement weather because the windows that it takes to work with fiberglass and things like that doesn't always match the windows here in the upstate South Carolina. Uh, anyway it's a great place to, to do a rebuild. We're thinking it's going to take about a year and a half uh, ish and uh, it's going to be a big deal any way you look at it. We're talking about we're going to this this command bridge, we're probably going to change it. Uh, we know we're going to change the superstructure, going to change the propulsion. Going to we've already started, as you can tell, on the on the uh, the bottom, working on it. In fact, we started working on a lot of things already. It took a while to get to this point where I can stop and make a video. Um, I'm not a video editor. I have to learn how to use the software too. So uh, let me let me catch you up. Let me show you all the things that I've gotten done so far and uh, where we want to be in that year and a half. So let's take a look. So here she is, uh, better known as Popeye by our previous two owners, but actually never had a registered name. Uh, the project, Project Plain Tree, was named after a 180-foot mesquite-class cutter of the U.S. Coast Guard. Built by the Marine and Iron Shipbuilding Corporation of Duluth, Minnesota, her 9-foot screw was propelled by a single 1,200 horsepower electric motor. That motor was uh, powered by two Westinghouse generators that was driven by two Cooper Bessemer inline 8-cylinder diesel engines. So that's why I named the project after Coast Guard Cutter Plain Tree, because she was the embodiment of the Coast Guard's motto, Semper Paratus. At 13 knots, she wasn't fast, but she was durable, lasting 56 years. After her keel was laid at the beginning of U.S. involvement of World War II, she then would serve for near 60 years doing aids to navigation for the U.S. Coast Guard. After being transferred to the United States Maritime Administration and placed in the National Defense Reserve Fleet, uh, she sat in Susan Bay for 10 years while they tried to find a place for her. After being unsuccessful, they very unceremoniously towed her through the Panama Canal to Brownsville, Texas, where she was scrapped. So as we approach near 50 years old, this Voyager is headed for the same path as the U.S. Coast Guard Cutter Plane Tree. 
but that's not going to happen. She's not going to be sent to the breaker yards. She's gonna see a full restoration. And we're gonna do it as a tip of the hat to the plane tree while utilizing the same principles of Semper Paratus to have a truly durable boat that can outlast in most boats of her class. The guys at the marina took pretty good care of us. They even parked us under a shade tree because uh, removing all the hardware was not going to be a small task. Uh, the command bridge alone weighed about 800 pounds and there was a lot of rails and uh, bimini's and that sort of thing that had to come down. Once I got the uh, command bridge all unscrewed and uh, jacked up and ready for the forklift to take it down to the ground, uh, it really wasn't too hard to get the rest of the rails. Uh, it was just a matter of time. There was a lot of things to get done, and then we had to motor back to Packlet, South Carolina to ready to the site uh, to receive the boat. Well, the boat was on its way, and it was time to assemble jack stands. And it was at this point that I realized why people buy them as opposed to make them themselves. Uh, I don't regret making them, and if I was to do it again, I'd, do it, I'd, I'd probably do it exactly the same way, uh, because they did turn out really nice, and I learned a lot. Uh, the keel blocks, uh, that was another big win. A neighbor had lost a big oak tree uh, it had a lot of rot on it, but there was enough meat there to make some great substantial blocks that would last two years very easily under heavy keel. Wow, what an exciting morning that was. The boat was finally there, and you know, I could probably do a whole episode on boat hauling in, in itself. It's, it's a big deal. Uh, we literally worked to the last minute. We finished out the, the keel blocks and the tarp and everything the morning it showed up. And uh, yeah, so now it was time to start thinking about the shelter. Uh, Paul and I had discussed it a little bit and got some thoughts together. And I decided on a gothic art style, basically because of the, the wind load and the snow load that it would have to withstand and also last for the duration of the rebuild, yet not cost a fortune. And you can find lots of uh, plans on gothic art shelters. They're commonly used in boat yards, uh, but uh, I chose to make my own. You will notice that I don't use screws 
uh, when assembling this, I use nails and adhesive. Uh, screws work good for holding and pull, drawing things together, but on a flexible load, uh, they tend to break. Nails are so much stronger. And also, you notice on this, while I like to do as much as I can by myself, this is not a thing to do by yourself. Uh, it's so much better to have someone else helping you stand these things up. Uh, they're, they're a little heavier than they look. With two people, we make it look quite easy. Uh, by yourself, it would be very difficult. And also, it also helps if you know someone who owns a lift. And I'm forever grateful to uh, Paper Street Sign Company who lent me their lift uh, to attach the top. Uh, that's, it's about 24 feet to the, to the ground. And uh, that, that red ladder you see there, that's an eight foot ladder. So you, kinda, you can imagine how tall that is. Um, to the, to the ground and the, having this lift available um, made the, the project so much safer. The engine the boat had was a uh, 50 horsepower Perkins diesel engine. Um, the front main seal had let loose and it was leaking a lot of oil. Uh, it, it really wouldn't have been a big deal to change that seal. Uh, again, I think you know we made the decision to try a different type of propulsion in the boat. Uh, so I am going to get rid of the engine. Uh, in any case, the, the engine had to be taken out. And that really wasn't as big of a task as you would think. Uh, it took me three days to get the rigging ready and get the engine lifted out, but that was because I was taking my time. And I think that is the key to getting this sort of thing done safely, is not getting in a hurry. <laughs> I wish I could say the same for removing the bottom coat, but when it came time to remove the anti-fouling, it took everything I could throw at it. From sandblasting, scraping, heat guns, nothing seemed to work. Fortunately, I did find a product called Safe Strip Pro, and it actually worked really good. Uh, it's a low VOC, biodegradable uh, product. And I, these kind of things I didn't think would work, but this one did and I don't receive compensation from them for saying that. Mama Bird's back. She is? Mm-hmm. Zoom in on her. Well, that wraps up our first episode of Project Plane Tree. Um, going a little slower than I had hoped, but uh, I can pick up the tempo pretty easy. Uh, we did get that engine out, got it crated up, and even got a buyer for it, which is pretty good. to help offset some of the cost. Uh, future videos will probably be a little more task-oriented. So if there is something in particular that you want to see, uh, put that in the comments uh, and uh, like the video, because that lets me know what you like and don't like. Yeah, or if you have questions about something, also ask those questions. Um, yeah, anyway, I think we're work our next video will be on the top. We, we cut the top of the pilot house off, and we're building a whole new one. Uh, that's going on here on the other side of the shop. You can't see that from here, uh, but that'll probably be what our next episode will be on. So I'll see you then. Talk to you later. Bye.